we would like to know that uh, if an object is kept in front of concave mirror or convex mirror or these spherical mirrors, then what are the characteristics of the images? Where are they formed? Are they big? Are they small? What is their size relative to the object? Are they real? Are they virtual? What happens if I move them closer? What happens if I move them further, etc. etc. To study this, we have to, it's a, it's a good idea to do an experiment. Take a, a spoon, a big spoon, which is uh, shiny, it has to be a, a shiny spoon and uh, shiny from both sides. And then what you do is, you hold it in front of your eyes and take it farther from you. Say so this is the mirror, this is the spoon and these are your eyes. So keep it, hold it from here, right, right, and then take it closer to you and farther from you, like this, okay. So say start it where from very far and bring it closer. Now note, what am I doing? These are your eyes, right? Therefore, you are looking at the image of your eye in this. Your eye is the object. The distance from the mirror to the eye is the object distance. And what you are doing is changing the object distance. And what kind of mirror is this now? If the rays are reflected from this side, this is a concave mirror. So, you are really looking at the image of an object which moves away from a concave mirror, if you do this. Watch out what kind of images you see. And we will, when we make a table of these, we will tabulate our results, we will see that uh, the image goes on decreasing or increasing in size, is it inverted or is it erect, we will see all this. You repeat this experiment by turning the spoon in the other direction. If I am using this shiny side as the mirror, then and this remains the object and if I move it closer from close distance to farther distance, then the, again this is the object, I am increasing the image object distance and I, again I will see the variation in the image formation in a convex mirror. That was concave, this is convex mirror. So do this experiment, tabulate your results and then you compare these results with what we are going to do now. Now, before we proceed, we will first take up concave mirror and before we figure out, so first is the concave mirror. Before we figure out where the images are formed and what is their nature, etc., we have to understand certain uh, definitions. Now, what are the definitions? Let us figure this out. For a concave mirror, for a concave mirror, the center of the sphere of which the concave mirror is a part is called center of curvature for the obvious reason. The exact geometrical center of the whole mirror is called the pole and represented as P. The line joining PC and extended beyond is called the principal axis. So, we have a center of curvature center of curvature, okay, because there is a curvature, center of curvature. We have a pole and we have principal axis, mind the spellings, P A L, principal axis. Okay. Now, we have a certain, uh, we have to be sure how to, uh, to where to shade, remember this is a concave mirror because the, the light is going to come from here and is going to turn. Now, Remember one thing, in mathematics either you have done it or you will do it in future, that for a circle, the line joining from the center to the circumference, obviously, obviously it is a radius, is always perpendicular to the circumference at that point. You see, for a plane surface, if I tell you to draw a normal, you it is very easy, okay, this would be the normal and you would make it the way you normally do. But if I asked you that, okay, this is a curved surface and draw a normal at this point, then you are in a fix. You do not know what is the direction of the uh, uh, the actual surface, it is not plane and therefore a perpendicular is not well defined as we look into a uh, normal sense. But it can be mathematically proven that for a regular proper circle, the radius is perpendicular to the circumference 
at the point of incidence. So, this is 90 degrees. Therefore, this line will be perpendicular to the mirror here. Similarly, I join any point on the circumference to the center of curvature, it will be 90 degrees at that point. Remember this. Now, normals are important because as you know, angle of incidence is drawn with the normal, angle of reflection is drawn with the normal and these two will be always equal in uh, reflection. These laws will be followed. right? Okay, So, these are the definitions and we will use these definitions. There is another very important definition. It is called principal focus. Principal focus or simply focus, just focus, all right? but that comes little later. Before that again you can do some activity, something interesting, but you have got to be a little careful. You will need to have a concave mirror with you, they are easily available in the market. Take one which has a little larger aperture, by aperture we mean this distance, this distance from here to here is aperture a p e r c u r ok. So, normally we deal with small aperture uh, mirrors, but for this experiment you can take a little bigger one. Let the sun rays fall on them. I did this experiment yesterday. It is not necessary that they have to fall directly even the reflected light very strong light summer light would work. You will see at one point here, if you keep a piece of paper move it here from somewhere here like this in this region, you will find that the paper becomes very hot, it becomes spotted black spot and after some time if you persist in keeping the mirror the way you do, it will start burning. Okay. So, this as I said you have to be careful in doing this experiment. So, what happens is this that when the light rays, now I am drawing a ray diagram. Now, remember one thing in this chapter this chapter falls under the branch optics of physics. This branch in which we deal with the functioning of light is called optics. In optics, we draw a lot of ray diagrams and you have to be careful as to how you draw the ray diagrams. Your pencil has to be sharp. When you draw a concave mirror or a convex mirror, you need a compass. Always draw, the curvature is not so strong. I am showing such a strong curvature only for your better understanding. Normally, they are quite flat looking, not so much even. With the naked eye, the, the curvature does not even show sometimes. So, what do you, when you draw the diagram, what you have to do is take the compass radius, put your, attach your pencil to the compass and take the radius as very large. In that case, you will have a flatter mirror. Okay. So, suppose I have kept the compass here and my pencil goes like this and I am drawing this nice looking mirror. Shade it nicely without shading you do not start because that is how you are showing which side is reflecting and which side is not. From the center where you had kept the, the point of your compass, write C that is center of curvature, write P and exactly midway you mark the point and call it F. I am coming to the importance of this F. Now, as I talked about the diagram, the activity of paper burning, let us see what is the corresponding diagram and what is the corresponding definition. You have sun rays coming parallel. Why are they parallel? If there was a small source and the rays started out, they would be diverging. But if the source is at one point and you are looking at far away point, then the rays which come from such a large distance look parallel here. So, if the sun is far away and you are, uh, you are working here, then the, the rays which are coming to you look parallel. They are exactly not parallel, but they look parallel. So, the rays which are falling on this concave mirror are parallel to each other. So, it is a parallel beam. Now, you can ask me why cannot I draw a beam parallel like this, which I did earlier. I can do that and that kind of diagram also be drawn. This is the simplest and therefore, we start with this. Now, what happens to these rays? Sometime later I will tell you that these rays will converge to a point on the principal axis after reflection. This ray comes first ray, it reflects here from here and then it passes through a point on the principal axis is reflected in this direction. Similarly, 
let me draw this second ray with two arrows and these two arrows this ray after reflection again will pass through the same point and will after reflection and will go in this direction and this point on the principal axis is called focus principal focus so for the concave mirror the principal focus is that point on the principal axis where a beam parallel to the principal axis meets after reflection if you remember how was an image formed in plane mirror image formation how does it take place you consider any two rays starting from an object why do we consider two rays why not more why not less we can take as many rays with infinite number of rays start from an object so you can take in any number except that your diagram will become an hodgepodge and therefore you take the minimum number which is 2 why is that number 2 because only two rays will intersect at a point after reflection and the point at which they intersect would be the image and therefore we take uh, minimum two rays of course we can take third ray fourth ray fifth ray and i will ask you some questions i'll tell you some answers of such questions later on what happens to the third ray what happens to the fourth ray etc now if you study this diagram you can ask me this question that where did i bring this rule from that if a ray is parallel to the principal axis it will go through a point on the principal uh, it is parallel to the principal how will it go through the principal axis what is the guarantee how did i know well use your laws of reflection it's, a, it's it's not rocket science it's very simple i have to at this point of incidence i have to draw a normal now the normal as i told you before is a line joining the point of incidence to the center of curvature okay so this is the center of curvature and this is the point of incidence and this is the normal to the mirror at this point and therefore this is angle of incidence and if you have this ray close by to the principal axis you will see that if you draw an equal angle of reflection on the other side of the normal then it will definitely pass through a point and the same thing would happen here and these two rays will meet at the same point which we happen to call as principal focus right so i have not drawn such thing geometrically i have not done this but we call it a thumb rule that such a thing happens and therefore we have made this rule that okay to make uh, a ray diagram this is the this is one of the rules thumb rules that we will follow 